Terry uh, is, is, is again one of my mentors. I'll talk a little more about him and what he's done for me later. Uh, I then got a chance to meet Bob. Bob walked in the room, asked me a little bit about my credentials and my background and all that kind of thing, and uh, and asked me if uh, if I was going to you know if I would work here if I was going to be able to teach. And uh, I thought about well, wow, uh, teaching. I really thought about teaching. You know. Uh, I wanted to do the sports medicine, and, and I wanted to be a strength and conditioning coach. And um, you know, I said, "Well, what about teaching?" And uh, I said, "Okay, well, I guess I need to start thinking about teaching." He said, "Well, I'll tell you what: if you can't teach, you can't coach." And he left that with me. So for the next eight years, he had us out and taught, and uh, and uh, it was the best experience in my life. It's been an opportunity to to be an instructor and be an educator. And really understand what that part of this was about. And Bob was right, you know, if you can get it right in the classroom and understand how to be an educator, then it carries over into being a coach. And uh, that was a huge piece of my young career that, that made a big, big difference for me. Um, you know, going back at that time, um, there was no model for high school strength and conditioning. You know, there were, there were colleges doing strength conditioning, and NFL was doing strength conditioning, but there was no recipe, there, and there was no internet where you could get online and look at YouTube and figure it out. Um, you know, so, so coming here, um, as we started developing this program and, and figuring out what to do, um, it was a process, and I cut my teeth as a young coach here, figuring that out. and. Um, you know, we started out in the, in the early 90s, really developing that program, and um, shoot, by the, by the late 90s, we really had developed an age group specific, you know, uh, uh, annual year-round strength and conditioning program for high school sports. It really became a model for strength and conditioning at the high school level in the Bay Area and in a lot of parts of the country for years to come. Uh, I think when I first started here, there were maybe one or two strength coaches that were doing this at the high school level. And of course, now we hear about strength conditioning uh, being done everywhere in the country at the high school level. But I still, I still answer emails um, monthly, weekly sometimes, about how to get it done um, and how to develop a strength conditioning program at the high school level. But what made it so successful again was the young people and the, and the and the athletes that came through that I had a great opportunity to coach. Um, again, by the end of that, by the time 2001 came around, 2002 came around, we were firing on all cylinders, and uh, our program was really putting out some, some, a great product with our work ethic. Um, and part of that, being able to do that, there were a lot of people involved that, um, that I have to thank, um, key contributors to allow me to continue to, to do what I did here on the field. At that time, I was running both the sports medicine part of the, the program as well as the strength and conditioning part. Um, and I, I got to thank and acknowledge Dr. John Wilhelm, who's, who's, uh, who was inducted a few years ago, um, and what he did for me and what he's done for this, this program. Um, Dr. Wilhelm was an unbelievable physician for us. He provided care the same care that we provide at the college level or better for our athletes here. And um, he really did a lot for me, he did a lot for this program, and uh, he made that program really uh, possible. Uh, Kent Mercer, who ran the training room, was the, originally an intern that, that came in and eventually was taking over the athletic training uh, program, and is still currently the head athletic trainer here. Um, and his assistants, Josh Montero and Justin Weber, helped me out and helped him out, which allowed me to coach on the field. Um, I've got to get across to Aggie Edson, uh, Terry Edson's wife. And the 2001 guys can tell you about the stretching and yoga classes that we did once a week with Aggie and Adam. And uh, she was unbelievable. Uh, and we stretched. And, you know, at the end of the day, to play football, you've got to be able to bend. And you got to be able to move. And if you can't bend and you can't move, you're not going to be very good. And so um, Aggie was a huge part of that for us and a huge part of our program. I'd also like to thank Mike Pickett. Mike Pickett was the owner and founder of 
of Silosport, which you guys probably know as Muscle Milk, their name brand product. Um, but Mike supported us back from day one here at Del Sal, providing us product and uh, supplements for our athletes, and uh, has supported me my entire career moving forward. So looking back at my time at Del Sal, it was magical. And a lot of people would say, yeah, it's magical because you never lost a game. <laughs> <laughs> but the magic I'm referring to wasn't about winning games. Don't get me wrong, I take pride in our victories and have tremendous respect for the young men that fought and sacrificed for those wins. That said, the real magic was in the process. A process crafted by Bob Blackstone, who instilled the mission and values of our founder, St. John Baptist Dale Sell, into the culture of the football program. What I experienced here was that success was measured by how well those values were executed through deliberate actions and behaviors. Values like faith, trust, honesty, love, sacrifice, commitment, courage, determination, and passion. This is the real magic of Dale South football. Proof is in what you see here today and the countless testimonies of those who have lived this experience. Bob and Terry, thank you for trusting me and thank you for your mentorship and friendship. I've learned so much from both of you. It's great, it's a great honor to be associated with this institution and its success. I only hope that I was able to give back what I was able to receive. Lastly, culture is only as strong as those entrusted to maintain it. I wanted to thank the great coaches that I was so fortunate to work with. In addition to Bob and Terry, these men labor to uphold the Dale South tradition. And those people are Mark Pinella, Justin Allenbaugh, Joey Aliotti, Patrick Walsh, Nate Gilderman, Terrell Ward, and many of the basketball coaches here that I also had an opportunity to coach with. Frank Lago, George Nesman, and Louis Reno. I'll never forget what we all accomplished together. I thank you for this honor. It's an honor and privilege for me and my family. Thank you. water polo team was an NCS and PBAL championship team. They are the only day of the NCS water polo team in history to go undefeated with a perfect 28-0 record, playing multiple games a day, including the NCS semifinals and finals on the same day. Their undefeated mark is incredibly impressive. At least 11 players on the roster continue to collegiate level teams. Many members of the team have gone on to teach, coach, and serve others. For more on the team, here's the video.
basically nothing. It was an infancy time, water pool here at Del Salle, even though we've been doing it 10 years. Uh, but we had got in a bunch of guys who had prior water pool experience. So Jimmy kind of took those guys all together and uh, raised them from, from freshmen to seniors. And uh, they formed this, this bond that, that was um, noticed throughout campus. Everybody knew who was a water polo player. They all hung out in the same area. Uh, I think they just set a real model for what brotherhood means in terms of sports and, and team. It was a time when, when we did not play any Southern California teams at that time. We were playing the best that Northern California had and, and you know, went through the mall that year. And uh, I don't think their, their record will ever be eclipsed because now as, as you know, we've, we've gotten a little better and uh, we travel a little bit more, we do play with Southern California teams and, and there's always going to be somebody pretty good, but at, at that point in time they were clearly the best team in Northern California. And I, I, I wish we would have traveled that year um, because I think they would have given the Southern California teams a run for their money. Ladies and gentlemen, Southern Center 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 Center
but we have a water pillow so like when the guy is on his back and he kicks the ball up over his head, he turns around and scores the goal. So you get to see that. But you also get to see Davis out St. Francis the ball now. So check out the show if you get a chance. End of shame. The 2001 football team was one of the best football teams in De La Salle history, as we've been hearing this afternoon. Featuring future NFL players Matt Gutierrez, 01, Maurice Jones Drew, 03, and Derek Landry, 02, as well as many NCAA Mountain athletes. The 2001 team finished the season 12 0 and brought the streak to a 125 0 record. During the season, the team played what was dubbed the game of the century and defeated Long Beach Poly, then ranked number one in the nation, 29-15. They outscored their opponents 567-87 to that year. For more on the accomplishments of the 2001 football team, here's the video. Well, when you think of 2001, you can't help but you know, think about the Long Beach Poly game, which was the most, uh, in my mind, still by the most hyped high school football game, regular season high school football game uh, in the United States. Um, you know, one guy, you know, Devon Walsh wrote a book on the game called One Great Game. Um, every news agency uh, across the country was following that game and at that game because of the winning streak, Long Beach Poly had four uh, athletes that were in the top 100 uh, you know, athletes in, uh, in, uh, for recruits in high school that year, which is unheard of. When you think of, just off, I haven't looked at the roster since then, but it's probably more, but just off the top of my head, there were six professional athletes in the game for Long Beach Poly. Um, Manuel Wright, um, Winston Justice, and Mercedes Lewis, and for us we had Derek Landry, Matt Gutierrez, and Reese Jones Drew. Just in, like I said, I looked at the roster, probably more guys from their side than the NFL, but I think there's six athletes, and like I said, that's off the top of my head, that were, were playing in a high school football game, and the hype surrounding that game, and uh, the fact that we were able to come on top down there, you know, we went on the road, they were there. It's funny, they called us up, and we had this, you know, 130 something winning streak, and the AD was like, well, if you want to play us, you have to play us here. You know, we're not going to travel. Like, you know, like, it was an honor and privilege to play Long Beach Poly. And so I thought it was a great challenge for our kids, and what a response that team had down there. In front of 17,000, we probably could have got 35,000 if we played a big enough stadium. But uh, what a great game for the, for the annals and the history of uh, high school football in California. Yeah, I think the greatest moment was when Coach Edson X says, uh, do you want to play Long Beach Poly? And we were so crazy and wild. We were like, we played the AFC Pro Bowl team. If you let us in, we to leave. He was like, well, I'm going to set the schedule up. Dude. You guys would do it. That's what we want to do. We want to, we want to measure ourselves with the best. And so I think that moment there is kind of what took that team to the next level is the things that happened in 2000 and being challenged with that that uh, that game of playing the number one team. And, you know, to be the number one versus number two team and that the mythical national high school championship, that's, that definitely set a lot of set us up. Well, they, you know, there's no doubt about it. Uh, Del Sol had the winning streak. And we played modern day, and that kind of put our name on the map. But when we beat Long Beach Poly at Long Beach Poly, that made Delosa famous throughout the United States. And we already had kind of a reputation going, but that cemented the deal right there, that Long Beach Poly game. Because there was no doubt about it. There, when, I walked, when I saw Long Beach Poly come out on the field, and I saw their size, first of all, I thought the field was tilting a little bit, but I could be wrong about that. But as I was the athletic director, and I actually said, I remember saying to myself, oh man, what have I got us into? And they, 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 were like, they looked like a Division I or an NFL team. I mean, that's how big they were. And the, the guts and the heart, and everyone could see that on TV and across the country, because the game was uh, nationally televised, how outsized, how man, the speed they had, but our kids, 
you know, the heart and brotherhood they showed in that game. You, you just, and if you were there, it was one of the most unbelievable games you've ever seen in your life. I mean, they're going to always be known, that team will always be known as the Giant Slayer. But not only that, but the, how much heart they showed in that game. It was unbelievable. Everything was done the right way. And uh, coaches did a great job. And uh, everybody was invested. It was like a dream season. And uh, working with those guys, they were all, they were all focused. Practices went great. You know, it made our job so, so much easier and as coaches. Because those were guys that wanted to excel. They wanted to be good. They all got along with each other. They enjoyed practice. They, they loved the games and they love to compete. It was just a, a dream team. The 2017 Davis Athletic Hall of Fame team inductee, the undefeated 2001 NCS State and National
and uh, I remember when Cotet's and Assis and Maurice and all these young guys were going, yeah, let's, you know, let's do it. And I'm like, geez, guys, I don't, I don't think of myself, I don't know. <laughs> you know. There's a lot on the line for us, um, a lot at stake. Of course, I didn't, I didn't say that, but um, that's kind of what I was thinking about um, as all that was happening. And um, I, I distinctly remember going in early in the off season, and some of the seniors were kind of sitting around after a workout shooting the breeze and talking and just kind of trying to formulate, you know, amongst ourselves, uh, you know, it's our senior year and it doesn't matter how many years you play on varsity, but when it's your team, your senior year, you, you can kind of take ownership of it, um, almost like a legacy thing, you know, you're kind of in control and we're thinking to ourselves, what do we want this team to be like, you know, how do we want to be remembered, and um, this was, I think, even before the, the we were going to play probably, but uh, we knew it was going to be a stiff schedule and we didn't know who the, you know who the stars were going to be when we had some great players, but what we kind of came up with was, hey, um, you know, let's let's see if we can kind of take it back to what you know we, what we believe the program was was made to be about. And it was really interesting hearing Coach Ladd talk about Tom, you know, and the way that he used to play as a lineman, and, uh, and that's really what what we thought Davis High was about, what Davis High football was about was. Know, not playing all the big games and you know the, the, the glamorous part of it, the, the big touchdowns, but really the grit of it and the, uh, the spirit. Coach Coach Ladd used to talk about you know bringing that spark and spirit to play, and uh, I think that the tenacity that everyone has talked about today for this team, the guys on the team, started to show itself very early in the off season on campus and, and sometimes away from campus too. <laughs> uh, just, just a tenacious group of guys, uh, a great group of guys, and definitely deserving of, of the recognition that they're getting today, for sure. Uh, I apologize if you guys are uh, done listening to Edson's talk. Uh, you hear Terry a lot on this, but uh, I'm, I'm Ryan Edson. I'm his nephew, who played wide receiver for, uh, for the 2001 team. Um, I think we all kind of talk about Terry Kochetson threatening the fact that we're playing volley. Uh, it was a different story with me after our first workout came in right in the weight room. Coach Blasquez asked us to stay around and Terry walks in, Coach Edson, excuse me. I used to be calling my uncle. Uh, he goes, uh, you guys wanted Long Beach Volley and got him at the beginning of the year. And after basically saying they're going to kick the crap out of us, uh, which is his way of coaching, sometimes uh, stealing the fear of God. Uh, to our team, we, uh, we all sat kind of silent for a minute, we kind of looked around, and then I think I vaguely remember either Derek or Matt just getting up, and he's like, it's time to go to work. And uh, I think that just instilled the team, and then as uh, Coach Blast was talking about, it was our purpose for that year. Um, I think a lot of us uh, have a lot of respect for the previous Martins um, for taking it to, you know, to other side, outside boundaries. Um, I know my brother's senior team played modern day one of the first time we played a really good Southern California team and uh, this team wanted to leave its legacy and uh, one thing we did talk about is this team absolutely loved each other. We uh, had great practices, we hung out off the field. Um, and what people don't know, our junior year for our seniors was a little bit rough. Uh, we went through a kind of a undefeated season but um, it always seemed that something was going on and this team really bonded and made sure that didn't happen and I think um, you know, I have just so much respect for all of these players. Um, Scrappy doesn't even begin to describe it. Um, you know, obviously we have the stars like Derek and Matt and Maurice Jones Drew, but a lot of these guys up here went on and played Division One football uh, when uh, a lot of people didn't think they would be able to. So it just proves the point of how Scrappy they are. Um, you know, we want to leave a legacy by being Marlon Beach Poly, and I think you know, going undefeated, uh, you know, something that was super valuable, and we cemented our legacy in Dallas on history. So I think that's so thank you for the committee, thanks for Dallas Hall, thanks for all the coaches, uh, families that sacrificed us. It was a truly great year. Thank you for being here.
Thank you everyone for coming today. My name is Lloyd Sheen. I'm the Director of Alumni Relations here at Dale South High School, class of 94. And um, I'm um, proud, so proud to be here this evening um, in one of our signature alumni athletic events. And um, I really appreciate everyone coming out to support all these uh, phenomenal athletes and phenomenal people this evening. So um, let's give them a more round of applause. At this time, I'd like to thank our MC, Robert Bonstein, um, who has given us his time and talent together to be with us. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Father LaSalle, for our spiritual prayer. Uh, thank you, David, um, Dr. David Flackler, the videographer for this afternoon. He's been doing this for a number of years now, and we really wouldn't be able to do um, what we do so thank you, Dr. Flatwell. Of course, our brother Lawrence Haley, Studio One, and also Bob Sands, some of our photographers for this afternoon.
met John Burke. He, he was the head of Concord Records. It was just a couple of years ago. And his knowledge of music really, really inspired me. To know that a man who so loves music and has lived music and has worked in music most of his life is in charge and oversees such wonderful catalogs of music made me feel very, very good. So John Burke, John Burke definitely is amazing. The John Burke I know is a handsome fella who, who works very hard, who is very straightforward, who in this business, I appreciate his honesty, his talent. He executive produced my album and his musicality was a real gift for that project. John Burke is going to leave a musical legacy, sort of a quiet one, because he has been behind the scenes of some of the greatest musical projects in the last few decades. He has really been an artist's friend and an artist's advocate. And in this day in the music business, that's few and far between. So John Burke will go down as a musical leader of his time. John Burke. You are, I understand, about to receive uh, the Alumnus of the Year Award. And uh, you have been, for a lot of years, the alumnus of every year I've known you. And uh, a great executive, a great musician, a great lover of music, a great lover of people, uh, and a great guy who enjoys a good cigar, too. Uh, I don't think you can be beat, John. Anyway, happy Alumnus Award, and uh, look around the room and see a lot of people who love you. It includes me. What I remember most about Tom Joseph and Thinking back on it today and when I had him as an athlete is that he reminds me of those old school football players like Ray Nitschke, Dick Butkus, some of those guys that are just get themselves down and dirty and just go after it and, you know, just tough guys. And he was a tough guy. He was a two way player. As uh, soon as his season was over in football, he turned over and just jumped right into wrestling and he was extremely successful in both sports. And he did it, I think, with just grit and determination. You know, I, I, he was athletic, sure, but I think his biggest attribute was just his toughness and his ability to just go play after play and just give it, its, play it at its top level. And um, he was just an old school, old school athlete that I, I think a lot of us, like Terry and myself, or look back on are really proud of, you know, we're like, yeah, yeah, he was one of those guys that was true Spartan, you know, he got dirty and he just got into the mix and into the fray and usually came out on top, you know, he was one of those guys that would, uh, at the game's end, at the season's end, he was the one standing victorious. You know? Tom's legacy at De La Salle is kind of like everything you want your high school alignment to be, you know, uh, regardless of their talent level, you want to have all his attributes, all his personality, uh, gifts, and you want him, you want your athletes to just kind of be your lineman, just to be like him. Because you know that he's going to get the job done, he's going to know what to do, and he's going to give it 100%. His senior year, um, he jumped seven feet up at Santa Rosa on his second attempt. And up until that point, Kevin was pretty much clear on everything he jumped. Um, that was his first miss at anything about 6'10", and he missed seven feet his first jump, he made it the second jump. After that point, he struggled. We had a hard time getting him up to 6'6", six, six, and we couldn't figure out what was going on. And so, we had to do his work his way through North, through league and through North Coast section. And then he, he went to Media Champions, and I think he finished third at Media Champions and just struggled even to get to state that year. 
goes down to state, finishes second, went five, went six ten, but it wasn't clean. Over the year before, everything was clean. At the end of the year, he goes to graduation, and he's invited to the Golden State uh, Championships up in Sacramento. And Golden State at the time only invited seniors. Well, at that event, they had seven guys. He went seven, seven feet or better. Kevin went seven feet, no misses, and finished second in the event. And that was outstanding compared to what he had to, to work his way through up until. He is positive, super, super optimistic. Um, and he's, he's a defier of stereotypes. Kevin was very popular. Uh, he was popular on the track, and he was popular off the track, and he was very popular with his competitors. Uh, very easy to get to know, very easy to get to like, and that uh, was very personal. Um, when he went to competition, he knew who he was competing against, and if he didn't before the meet, he knew after the meet. Never was intimidated by him, and, and grew. The tougher the competition, the better he performed. I mean, his legacy it, is that he's so well liked um, for for different reasons. You know, I think he gives that to you first of all. Um, he is genuine. He he cares about other people, and you feel that when you meet him. So again, he's been able to span and and break down any barriers and cross any bridges that he's had to to connect with you know the men and the women on the team people from different socioeconomic backgrounds different ethnicities different religious affiliations um, and I think people really appreciate his ability to do that and it's genuine he's got two of his legacy sitting out in the crowd today his sons, Gavin and Kieran, who are going to get to hear how great of an athlete and person their dad is. But I also think from the athletic side, Kevin Keane was this close to competing in the Olympics, which is something that not a lot of people could say. So cheers, Kevin. Derek Landry's one shining moment was the Long Beach Poly game, where um, I, you know, I wouldn't say he single handedly <laughs> was uh, involved in handling their line, but I know there was a, they were telling me about it in the third quarter, I think it was, and the quarterback came to the line of scrimmage and looked over the line and just pointed at Derek and said, Well, somebody blocked that dude. And uh, that was Derek. I mean, he was a fantastic offensive and defensive lineman, obviously. He was just one of the best linemen we ever had here. And, you know, you looked at him as a younger athlete and even as a senior in your, like, he's, he's kind of, he was big for a high school lineman, but, you know, what he accomplished beyond high school is just phenomenal. Because when he went off to Notre Dame and uh, you always thought, gee, I wonder if he's big enough to make it at that level or I wonder if he's going to get, you know, swallowed up by some of the bigger linemen and stuff, stuff like that. And, um, I think everybody here believed in him and said, no, he can handle that because we knew what he was capable of doing. But I think everybody on the outside kind of questioned whether he could do it. And here he went on to uh, play at Notre Dame and had an outstanding career, moved on from Notre Dame into professional football and had a lot of years in professional football and was very successful there. He was just like beat the odds. He was just one of those guys that, you know, You'd always look at it and go, well, I don't know if he could do that. But lo and behold, he could not. He would not only do it; he would do it at a high level and every every uh, level that he played in. The best way to describe Derek would be the, the gentle giant, very sensitive young man, uh, very caring about his teammates. And uh, right now, you know, like I said, he's coaching in high school now, and I'm, he's a great role model for kids as well. Derek's legacy for me is not just what a great job he did in his career here, college, and in the pros, but now he's the head coach of a, his own football team. And he wants to give back, and he, wa he loves the game that much, and he wants to see younger kids grow and, and be successful in football and life. And whenever we have athletes that leave, have a career and coach, or just leave and move on and teach and coach, we're very proud of those guys. And you know, we feel like we had something to do with that.
that uh, we provided a foundation for them to step out and do those things and be successful. of soccer is such that with each contest and each training there's potential for something crazy to happen or you know a moment that kind of makes you jump out your seat and we definitely had many of those moments with coach Mike and I think the the thing that stands out most about him um, is just his passion that he brought every day um, his energy and his willingness to sacrifice and be around the kids as much as he was. Mike's legacy is uh, at this school I think is everything we want our graduates to be you know, conscientious, um, service-oriented, doesn't have an ego, wants to serve, wants to make a difference in other people's lives, um, solid, honest, just a good person. I mean, reliable. He's just, uh, just a wonderful guy. I, I really, he's one of my favorites that I ever coached. Mike Salvamini, he's, uh, he's a, lot of, a lot of different characters, I'd say. Um, if you saw him on the sideline during matches, he uh, can be a bit uh, excited. Uh